thank you, Mindy. Um, I actually haven't finished the middle grade biography. I'm in the research phase of it. It will be um, published in 2016. But I feel truly honored in that I have had the opportunity to be in three community libraries this um, week, both Maumee Branch, which is where I hail from, the Perrysburg Way Library, and the New York Public Library, where I spent a good portion of last weekend in the Manuscripts and Archives Division there, which was just an absolute dream for me, um, being very much an advocate of and supporter of libraries. So, so this evening, with as noted, the, the um, theme being community of ideas, I thought I would share with you this evening my inspiration, my idea, the vision, and then the reality, and how Claire's Day came to be and um, where it has come thus far. So first, I'm going to get you out of your comfort zone a little bit. This is really just a suggestion. You don't need to do this. But I offer this in that I want you to consider it's taking off your shoes and stepping into mine and noting that this very first portion of the presentation is difficult. But as I share, and more often than not, my audiences these days, since Hidden Ohio was published a couple years ago, are children. So if you want to squirm a little bit and get a little more comfortable, I am perfectly fine with that. I'm used to that. As Mindy offered, though, please do not raise your hand if you have a question. You can see me afterwards. Um, I'd love to hear what you have to contribute as far as your experiences. Um, but again, I'll, I'll talk to you following. But just consider consider and be aware of what I've been through. So take off your shoes, manner of speaking, and um, consider. My inspiration, this is really my inspiration. It isn't just Claire, it's my family. And this is my husband, Brad, and our daughter, Claire. This picture was taken in 1998 on the playground in Lexington, Kentucky, which has the distinction of, as being known as the model for the Sesame Street playground. How cool is that? And our daughter, so our daughter Claire was eight at the time in this picture. Our daughter Kyle in the pink jacket, and yes, her name is Kyle, but she is very much all young woman, as you'll see later on in pictures. And then our son Ian, who had this propensity to constantly turn his head in, in pictures, um, and still to this day. So here we are. This is my family, and what I'm about to share with you, really they were my inspiration to move forward in the direction that I did in life. This is Claire. She was just 10 years old when she left us the morning of July 6, 2000. That morning I had one of mommy's finest come to my door to share the news that he uh, was, was very difficult for him to share and to share the news that as a parent you never hope or expect to hear. He was there to tell me that Claire had died while attending camp, suddenly, unexpectedly. She had a heart condition which was misdiagnosed. She was expected to live a full and active life. What do you do with that? I had two other children who were eight and six at the time. I had a husband who I loved dearly. And I knew, I, I think one of my most prevailing thoughts soon after recovering from the initial shock was that we had an amazing 10 years with Claire, and that Kyle and Ian deserved every bit of that, as did Brad and I. And that I would do my utmost as Claire's mother, as Kyle's mother, as Ian's mother, to ensure that. And so, my family and Claire and our loss was my inspiration. Brad and I have met many bereaved parents throughout the years. And um, amazed and honored to know how they too have honored their children. Brad and I felt almost compelled from the very beginning to do so. And for the first six months it just kept coming back to who was Claire and wanting to honor and celebrate who she was and what she loved to do. And every time we had the conversation it just kept coming back to books and yet we couldn't quite figure out how we would incorporate books or the library or which we take weekly trips to the library I mean books were always a part of my life and of Brad's life and it was certainly a part of our children's lives and so six months after losing Claire we were on a flight to Jacksonville Florida where um, half of my siblings live and my oldest niece's wedding 
in Jacksonville. And this is the really crazy part to me, is that I sit in my plane seat across the aisle from Brad. I have one child on one side, he has one on the other. And again, noting the irony there that we were used to trying to accommodate three as opposed to accommodating two. And in my seat pocket was a Time magazine, in-flight issue of Time magazine. I had a book, but I thought, you know, I'll check it out. I haven't seen a Time magazine in a while. The front read, How to Overcome the Slump. I thought, wow, again, you know, if there's answers here to help me overcome, which could be minimally described as a slump, I'm going to read it. So I paged through the Time magazine, and amazingly, there was a story about First Lady, former First Lady Laura Bush, and her involvement with the Texas Book Festival. It was like, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I have multiple times over now. It was that, whew, that literally like glass of water thrown in my face saying this, this is what you're going to do. And what I read about the Texas Book Festival was that they featured Texas book authors and illustrators or those that had hailed from Texas. And I thought from the very exercise, being a writer myself, I always wanted our children to know who drew the pictures and who wrote the words. So we'd go to that back flap and we'd learn about the author and the illustrator. So I knew from that exercise all those many years with the kids that we had a wealth of talent in our backyard of children's book authors and illustrators. I turned to Brad, I handed him the magazine, I had tears in my eyes and I said, this is what we're going to do. He kind of looked at me like I'm crazy and I thought, you know, I'm not First Lady Laura Bush and we're not the capital of Ohio and you know, we got a whole lot of challenges there, but it took vision. And it was not only my vision and Brad's vision, but a whole team, a community that came together to help steer our vision into a reality. I reached out to individuals that I used to work with at the Toledo Convention and Visitors Bureau and over at Seagate Center. I was in marketing positions with them and asked them to help me with this vision. I wish I had that original letter for as one of the committee members who was with us for well over 10 years said, Julie, how could I, how could I say no to that? And I am so pleased and honored that we continue to have so many say yes to us at Claire's Day. Claire's Day was established in 2002. We had our first event at the Mommy Library, and it was just a day. And just a day is doing it injustice. It was a day filled with laughter. I wish I'd been recording all of the sounds. Maybe we'll do that this year, Corey. Thank you. <laughs> But just the sounds of children laughing and the words being read from books and balloons knocking against each other. I think, Corey, we're going to have you there. Balloons <laughs> knocking against each other on the tents and just the laughter and the joy. And more so, above all else, the joy of our two children as they have now grown up with Claire's Day as being a part of their reality. And again, thanks to the vision of so many, this day is not only just a day anymore, it's grown to a full week long of events. And with our recent collaboration with Read for Literacy, creating young readers programs, I envision that we have really just begun with this. So let me share with you a little bit of what the visual of the reality of Claire say. Here we are. Second annual Claire's Day is noted on our t-shirts. Well, Ian didn't quite have the lean there, but again, trust me, it's there. So you see the purple balloons, you see, you see the crowds coming. Children's book authors and illustrators are sharing their stories, their inspirations. Illustrators are doing all of their fun, crazy drawings and signing shoes and t-shirts and all of that. And we have uh, special hands-on activities, tents. Um, we have, this is an expansion of the Claire's Day event. It's kind of taking Claire's Day on the road. And I was talking with Tom, superintendent of Perrysburg Schools, who they've partnered with us. Way Library has partnered with us in hosting authors or illustrators that are coming to Northwest Ohio to celebrate and be a part of Claire's Day. And this gentleman is actually kind of outside of our, our out of the box thinking, if you will, is that we've had um, some partners, including Mazza Museum down in Finley, who work with some amazing illustrators. This is one of them, Chris Soonpe, but he hails from New York. 
And they said, you know, he is so phenomenal. He wants to be a part of this. Let's work together to make it happen. And so Chris Soonpete was with us a number of years ago. Here he is at a school. We have a school visit program, whereas the children's book authors and illustrators come and visit schools. The schools pay the honorarium. Claire's Day helps offset some of their expenses, so it becomes a win-win situation. So these illustrators and authors are literally in front of thousands of children for that week leading up to Claire's Day. Again, just they're very whimsical. They're amusing. They're entertaining. They are getting kids jazzed up about reading. And you know, when I sit and I listen or I'm a part of that experience, I hear Claire. And I see Claire. I see her in her little purple shirt somewhere, just enjoying and laughing. I hear her all those times when she didn't want to come to dinner because she just had one more page to finish in a chapter. I hear her when it's time to do chores and she would say, Mom, can I just finish the book? I've used that in school visits, and I said, trust me, it works, so try it on your papers. But so here is, here is Chris Zumpete, who's with kids. He's engaging them. He's got them up on the stage, and they're all, again, getting jazzed up about reading and illustrating. Look at this. Again, this is the kind of crowds I usually, so if any of you are getting uncomfortable, you know, we didn't bring any of the carpet squares from the, from the children's section back there, but, you know, look at that joy. Just look at that joy. They're listening. I don't see anyone that's not paying attention there. I mean, I'm sure if we spent more time, maybe it's time to go. But um, <laughs> so this is another fun extension of the evening. This is Claire's night. I want to say the very first year, the committee wanted to do both Claire's Day and Claire's Night. And we were very wise to take it in steps. And both that third year of Claire's Day, um, we invented, created the school visit program as well as Claire's Night, which is a very fun evening at Main Library in their children's section. I mean, this is a fabulous library here. Every library is. But the children's section at Main Library is just, it's a reflection of our artists and our writers in Northwest Ohio at Main Library. And if you haven't been recently, I would encourage you to come. And I know we're not supposed to promote anything, but I'm doing a shameless plug here, is that Claire's Night is Friday, May 16th. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to meet our children's book authors and illustrators, rub elbows with them, buy books, and get them personally signed. You're experiencing as an adult for the special children in your life what children experience on Claire's Day. So there we all are. One of the individuals in this picture was a dear friend of ours. He passed a couple of years ago. The gentleman in the hat is uh, Will Clay, who was uh, from Toledo. Um, and he uh, was a fabulous storyteller as well as illustrator. And his work, again, is uh, represented at Main Library. We miss him. I still hear Will at Claire's Day, too. This is the highlight of the day. This is what distinguishes us from just being a book festival. This is the CARE Awards program. These are children that are very proudly showing their certificates with Brad, tall six foot five Brad in the background there with all of these children who have been recognized as their principals, their teachers, their reading specialists as being the most improved readers in their schools. Think about it. These are the kids that rise above. And they, uh, they start out at a reading level that is so below where they ought to be. And then through the efforts of their educators, through their adults in their lives, through the encouragement that we give them and the recognition that we give them at Claire's Day, whereas we give them a certificate, a very special certificate, and even more importantly, we give them a coupon for them to choose their very own book from Barnes & Noble. A number of these kids don't have books at home. A number of these kids, their stories, it makes me, it makes me laugh and it makes me cry. And Brad shares the story at the start of every session with the children of how when we would read to the children at night, as Claire became more adept and skilled in her reading, she realized that dad was switching up some of the words or mispronouncing some of the words. He's dyslexic. And she was catching on to that. 
And so she said, she said, Dad, how about if I read to you? And, and she encouraged him through that way. And it was a very um, special bond for the two of them, their time. So he would, the two of them would read together. She got older and I would read with the younger two. So Brad shares that story at the start of every award ceremony. We have grown from 25 students our first year in 2002. Now as we come into the 13th annual event on May 17th, we expect to reward and award over 500 children this year. Amazing. All in Claire's honor and memory. This is Marcia Thornton Jones, Bailey School Kids. Kids just loved her. They were all gaga. Bailey School Kids books, probably one of the most popular, but we've had run the gamut. It's amazing to me the authors and the illustrators and the talent and how prolific that they are. And again, literally in our backyard. And this needs no sound, needs no words. We see this all day long. Family members enjoying books together. Claire's Day has provided me with opportunities beyond my dreams, including the opportunity to write Hidden Ohio, which was published back in 2009, and it provided me the opportunity to get into schools to share the wonder of our state. And it also um, gave me the opportunity to share the Claire's Day story. Here we are as a family, Ian with a little bit of the lean. Our daughter is a senior at University of Kentucky. He's now a sophomore at Ohio State. You can put your shoes back on, but think about where I've been how, we, how we've moved forward, where we're going. And I am so very grateful for Brad and for my children who continue to be my inspiration. We ha have incredible ties, wonderful, loving relationship. They are well-adjusted, happy young people. And I have often said, no matter what I do, they are my greatest accomplishment. Allow your idea to become your vision, and may you have a happily ever after reality as I have done so. Thank you very much.